something just arrived in the mail that I've been waiting weeks for. So let's open it up and get going. This is my 3D printer. Gloves? What the fuck? Got some gardening gloves with your 3D printer. I don't know what that is. Uh, I've never had a 3D printer before. This is my first one. I don't know if it's normal to come with all this stuff. I'm sure it is. Anyway, there's a reason for this. We're gonna, we're gonna do a little project. To do with drones, obviously. It has a handle. So it's, uh, looks like a Mac. <laughs> That is cute. Real cute. So, why would I show you my 3D printer? It's not just flexing, I'm not just there going, ooh, look at me, I got this cool thing. What I'm actually doing is I want to show you how to build something that should help you. Uh, it's basically an idea I had to connect your radio to any simulator on the computer. You can just use a USB cable on a lot of these. They usually have a little um, little port at the bottom or on the back. But that's not very cool. You, know? you want it to be wireless, man. And there's one thing you can do is you can buy these little wireless dongles. They're about 30 quid and they're basically like... Uh, they're just a receiver that you plug into a USB drive. Uh, I'll flash one up on the screen. Actually, I have one here. They look like this. And these are about 20, 30 pounds. Uh, this is an FR Sky one, and it just plugs straight in, and then you can bind with it like you would a normal radio. These are weird though. I'm having issues with these that they sometimes disconnect. Could just be mine's a bit full. Uh, so here's the idea: is Beta Flight 3.5 introduced something called the USB HID, which is you can use when the quad's plugged into the computer. You can use the receiver and the flight controller as if it was a USB human interface device, which means it's like a joystick. So you can just connect the quad to the computer and then basically that's like, then you use your radio as a joystick, which is pretty cool, but it means you have to plug your whole quad into the computer at all times, which is kind of stupid and it would look kind of funny if you wanted to carry that around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this is a CR Racing F4S that is dead. It's not completely dead, it just doesn't have the VBAT power. It still powers from USB and all the 5 volt stuff still works, I think, if I remember rightly. So it means that it wouldn't be able to power ASCs or anything and it wouldn't power motors. So it's actually kind of useless for a flight controller for a quad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Beta Flight 3.5 on this, put a receiver on it, and then use it as if it was just a little dongle for a computer. But so that it doesn't look like just a circuit board hanging off my, my computer, I'm going to build a nice little enclosure for it, which is what the 3D printer's for. So we've got the CL Racing F4S, and I've also got an XM Plus uh, FR Sky receiver that I'm not using in any quads, and it's quite, um, it's quite a basic one, it doesn't have telemetry or anything like that, so it'll be perfect for this. So I'm just going to design an enclosure that'll fit these two things. So 36. The other difficult bit is this USB port needs to be exposed to the edge. So that's cool. We can make a little hole in the box for it, but it's not exactly in the middle. As you can see, it's a tiny bit offset to the one side. So we need to find out exactly the measurements of that bit and where it is. Easy peasy. Simple math. Oh, ah. Alright, so what do we do now? Mm -hmm. Let's try and do some CAD. This is cool because I've not really done much 3D stuff for printing before. So, um, But it's a freaking box, right? It's got four walls. A seat. I'm going to have to print in two, two, two parts, aren't I? Yeah, okay, cool. Well, I'm glad I thought this through. It's just a lid and a bottom piece. Let's get started on the CAD. So I found this uh, USB cable connector thing on um, on like a Thingiverse site. I found like a Thingiverse site for just for like mechanical stuff and electronic stuff. And so there's this really nice, really high detail version of the USB port. 
So then I used that and made a simple version and then cut a hole in this little box, put the standoffs at the right place. Uh, it's probably too, I mean, it looks really high, doesn't it? Like that might be too tall. I don't know. When I started making this, I didn't really think about a, I didn't really think about a lid being a separate part. I just thought I'd make a box. Um, obviously, you need to get the flight controller into the box. So I have to make a little separate part. Are we ready to print? It's gonna be fun. Woohoo! I'm excited. Hour and a half? It's a little box. So while that's heating up and printing, I'm going to solder the flight controller and then we can test that out and then we can do the beta flight stuff. But the printer's probably gonna be too noisy, so I might wait till the printer's finished before we carry on with the video. Soldered the uh, F, the XM Plus to the board now, so I'll just probably secure that down with some double-sided tape, and then that's the internals done, right? So now we just have to wait for the 3D printer to finish, which you can probably hear in the background whirring away, and then uh, we put them in, and then like glue the lid on. Can't wait. Okay, one and a half hours later, and we have our first print, and the USB is in the wrong place. What a tool. What I've done is I've printed it inside out, so the USB is on the wrong, so even though it was simple maths, like I said, I still fucked it up. Meh, fucked it up. So, let's go again. It looks like a box. Let's see if this one's a little better. The USB doesn't look lined up still. It's part of the fun, all the trial and error. So that last print I had to leave running overnight because it was getting really late. So it's actually the next day now. So this is the first two day video that I've done. Pretty crazy, but here it is. The box is complete. Has my little name on there on the front. It's got the flight controller and the receiver inside. And there's a little USB port on the side in just the right place. So, phew, we got there in the end. The way that I glued the top and bottom together is I used a bit of acetone, like some nail varnish remover, because it's ABS, so uh, it doesn't really work very well with super glue. But I read online that you can use acetone just to sort of melt the two layers together and it holds pretty well. It is actually really solid. So let's plug it in and uh, set it up in beta flight and show you how it works in the sim. Oh yeah, the one thing, before you glue the lid on, make sure you bind the receiver with your transmitter, because I didn't do that first, and then I had to prise the lid off and press the bind button. So that's going to be a problem if you ever want a new transmitter or anything. I haven't made a way to get to the bind button. So, V2 is going to have a bind button on the outside, <laughs> but this one does not. Now we can go to beta flight configurator, now that this thing's plugged in, connect. Uh, go to the CLI tab, type set USB underscore HID underscore CVC on, oops, equals on. Yeah, make sure you save. Always gotta save. Um, now you can see in the game controllers, a CR Racing F4 has appeared. So that's good, that means it's working. Uh, the other thing you can do though is, yeah, what I like to do is go into the configuration and just turn everything off. Um, turn the loops down, turn the gyro update and the PID loop down to as low as they can go. Just because these things kind of get warm if they're just running. And now you can see the CPU load is 0%, which means this thing shouldn't get too warm because we're not using the gyro or anything, really. We're just using the receiver pins to make a controller, to make a joystick. You can close beta flight, configure it here, and then you'll never need to open it again for this device, as long as this is all you want to do with this. Now when I plug it in, game controller appears, and... That's it, you don't need to open anything. Just works. Cool, there you go. 
works. The nice thing is that you're now playing um, wirelessly, so you can use your harness if you want and your fat shot goggles, you could plug those in. You know, you could basically get as close to the real experience as you wanted, as you possibly can. Obviously if you're tethered to the computer you can't really do that. Look, no wires, just to prove that it is working over the RF. Which I guess is going to give you a slightly better um, sort of feeling of the real world with any sort of little bits of latency because of the RF signal, which is, I don't know. I feel like that's probably incomprehensible to mere mortals. So it's probably bullshit, but it just, it feels like it's a closer experience. We got there in the end. It's like six prints later, I think it was in the end. This was a kind of a success, I guess. I'd say that this is a, it's pretty cool. If you've got a load of like flight controllers that don't work lying around, then this is a really nice way to save some cash on one of those uh, little simulator dongles that you can get. You don't need to make a pretty box to surround it. I just wanted to do that because I just got a 3D printer. That's kind of, I'm going to use it for other stuff, like all of the mounts and things in the, in the upcoming builds. But for a test, I just wanted to get a, get a handle on the 3D printing. Um, just thought it would be a nice nice thing to make. But yes, there it is. It's it's all working and I'll be using it from now on whenever I need to play on a simulator. Okay, cool. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.